was all in create this time round. This is basically a demo of the for each element zone. So this is a fairly new thing in geometry nodes. And the advantage of this is you can be getting a unique object for scattering purposes as well as motion graphics or whatever you want to use it for. The advantage being is that we don't have to create these singly and scatter them. Actually creating this all as a single object. These aren't actually instances, they're all being combined. So that's the downside of the technique. But the upside is that you can get a massive amount of variation and the more controls you put into this, the more you can make each of these look unique. So this is really just an introduction to the technique. So let's make a start on the tutorial. Start by adding a new geometry nose modifier. And the base object there is going to be a grid. And just going to scale that up 2x2 two two and 10x10 10 10 verts. I'm going to add in for each element zone and hook the input of the grid to the first node and the out node to the output. And you can see getting no difference in the viewport. Because this socket here just gives you the thing that's come in, or the geometry that's come in. And this is the new generated. So if I come out of here, we don't get anything because I haven't actually generated any new geometry. So you want to add in a cylinder. And make that three vertices. Depth of 0.5 and radius of 0.5. And now if you put that into the generated geometry there, you'll see you get something. So it looks like you've only got one. But you've actually got one of those per point. Why don't you change that to per face? And to actually have them on each of the faces, we need to transform them. So transform geometry node. And we need a translation for this. So if you get position. Now if you put that in, it doesn't work. The reason is that for a start, this is a field. So you can see the diamond socket, and this is only taking a single value there, which is the round. So what you need to do, a little bit counterintuitive how this works. So positioning to here, you can see that field is now changed to a rounded socket. You can put that into the translation. Just going to put the cavity on and kind of see what's going on there. Put the radius down 0.1. So they may look like instances. You look at the spreadsheet, I see zero instances and a whole amount of geo there. Because that's actually one object. So if you did hit apply. You know, that's a single object. So that's an important concept. And that's the power of this for each element zone is that each one of these we can make unique. 
rather than the standard instancing workflow, which we're either going to use one object or a series of objects. We can have each one of these as a unique looking thing. So first thing I want to do there is actually get that up off the ground. So if I shift D that transform geometry and make that 0.25, that's half of the depth. So that will put it on the ground plane. And now the next thing I want to do is randomize the number of vertices here. So if you get your random value, and change that to integer between three and six. So same problem. You can see you've got fields, socket, and then we've got round socket here, which is just a single value. So the way around that is that ID to use the index. So that means each of those faces has a unique index, which is basically going to drive that random value. You've still got control of the seed there. So straight away you can already see that that saves us putting in three, four, five, six, you know, four different objects there. Because you can take that as far as you want. And put that back to six. And now to make this easier and a bit neater to look at, I'm just going to grab those three nodes, control G, put it in a group. I'm just going to call that item. And what we're going to do is just keep basically making each of these more unique. So first thing I want to do there is shrink down the top of that. But first I want to put four segments on the side there just to give us a bit more chair to work with. So scale elements, so we don't want everything scaling, just want that top. And you can see what happens there. So point 0.3, but what I'll do is fold that down, and a shift E, change that to a float. And somewhere between, say, 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. There you can see that's varying how much it's being scaled in by. I'm going to grab an extrude. Same sort of thing there. Put the top selection in. And we're going to vary the amount that's being extruded. And I'm going to make that, say, 0 0.1, 0 0.3. So you can see, you know, let's change these seeds. Each one of these is a unique object. What is this? Some are looking more unique than others. And the more of these controls that you add in with the random values, the more you'll get a unique object. Probably would be good for me to change the size of that, but it's a bit more marking around with the transform, so I'm going to leave that. Probably the next thing I want to do is do something on the materials. 
I'm just going to add in three materials. I'm going to call that one paint. Then make that bluish. Make a glass. And a chrome. And make that metallic. Maybe 0.2 on the roughness. Now I want to start applying these materials. So first place I want to put the first set material is here just after we create the cylinder. And rather than selecting it there, she can use a index switch in material mode. See by default there's only two slots. So you can add this in the sidebar. Doesn't matter which order, the say paint, chrome and glass. Put that into the socket there. And now I need to drive that. So same thing here, we've got integer going in. You'll notice that changes to the round socket when I plug that in. And of course we need to change that. So it's either 0, 1 or 2. And so let's put it on the whole of each object. Do that same thing. But I want to do it on the extrude as well. So set material, same thing here, we need to change the seed, otherwise it's going to match what we've already got. And that is overriding the whole thing. I put side, you can see now it's just doing the side part of that extrude. Obviously some of them will keep the same material. Now the last thing I want to do there is actually smooth those out. Subdivision surface and smooth. And you want set shade smooth. And I'm going to vary the edge crease here. So somewhere between that one, like a point two. Just going to bump up the level. And the same kind of thing here. Of course, that's going to be a float. So I'm doing 0 and 1. Change the C to anything. And put that into edge crease. And now just a few final tweaks before wrapping up. I'm just going to change the grid size to 4 by 4 going to add in a plane just as a 4 and just a couple of final things in there in the randomization you get a random radius here so just a random float going into radius 0.02 to 0.2 
and then I might get this extrude also be able to come down into the object. So extrude here, we'll do minus 0.3. Now it actually can come into the object as well as out. So that's the final result. As you can see, a lot of variation. Hopefully found that useful. Thanks for watching.